Is that a better view, guys? You're mean. Hello and welcome to Imperfectly Me Crafts, where craft beer and handcrafts combine most of the time in a messy way. So today I am going to be working on my craft for Lena Brewing Company. We will be making them pretty much a game for their bar. Uh, the place had a ton of games and they also have a rooster theme to the whole brewery. So. We are going to be giving them a, a nest, like a chicken nest, a roosting nest, with eggs that indecisive customers can pick one of the eggs and inside will be one of the taps, uh, like the, a paper that says one of the taps. So that way indecisive guests just get to pick an egg and there you go. I will be uh, using today uh, more wire. I will not be crocheting it this time, but this is 22 gauge. So it's a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger than the previous one. This is gonna be the internal structure of the nest. I also have some brown tissue paper. I'm going to be wrapping the wire frame in tissue paper. So I have some raffia, I have some Spanish moss, and some fun colors that I'm gonna be doing over the top. Last but not least, we have our eggs. So the Craft for Lena Brewing Company, we're actually starting up here in the garage again. But first, I'm about to do a beard craft. I need a beer. Lena Brewing Company, their campfire. Whoop, too close. Ale. Yeah, too, too, too close, darling. Too there you close. go. Their campfire ale. This is American ale. It says it refre it's refreshing and it's a compliment to all seasons of outdoor relaxation, perfect for sipping by the fire and under the stars. All right, let's take a look. That is like a perfect head on that. It's so, like, exactly as foamy as you want. The color is lovely. Ooh, look <laughs> at the bubbles, ooh. We don't oh, have too light. I got bubbles and I can see you in the beer. Hi, everyone. Hi. Right. <laughs> Yay, get my beer back. <laughs> mm. And it smells similar to the macros. You get um, that kind of, corn rice sweetness to it. All right. Cheers everyone to a brand new Lena Brewing Company craft. And you know, it tastes similar to the macros too, but then you get the, this uh, sweetness and the teensy hot bite at the end uh, that shows that it's, well, not a macro. <laughs> Uh, that is really nice. This would be a good transition beer for a lot of folks who haven't gotten into craft yet. When folks walk into their brewery and say, I want a Budweiser, well, here's something that's slightly similar, but way better. This is wonderful for that. Does it have a campfire taste smell to it? Or would you know, it just complement the campfire? Yeah, I'm not getting a smoky, I'm not getting like a campfire taste. But I could totally see drinking this at 4th of July up in Michigan around the campfire. So we and need a 24 pack then. <laughs> no, a 48 pack. No, a 72 pack. Yes, that is what we need. Uh, well, that's like four days, right? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I thought you meant the first night. Oh, the first night. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. So this one's a 4.1 ABV, also crushable, sessionable. You could drink this several times a day and be uh, happy about it. So yeah, I'm on board, this is nice. Because even though we're doing all these craft beers, we still crave the the ones we grew up on. And not grew up on, you can't say that because you, you were- I grew up on it, it was in my baby bottle. <laughs> <laughs> not 
grew up on, uh, started out on. I mean, everybody started out on the macros here in the States, and this is such a beautiful step up from that. Very, very nice, Lena. You did awesome on this one. This is beautiful. All right, let's get to the crafting. So I picked these up on Amazon. It was, what, 10 bucks for a whole bunch of these. They are uh, the plastic Easter eggs that you can snap together. We are gonna do one dozen eggs. I learned from your past videos, you always do a little bit extra in case you screw up. Oh, and then we'd have to do a bigger stuff. Yeah. 13. And one more for safety's sake. All right. So, so I have many? 14 that I'm painting now because I want to have extras in case I, well, in case I'm imperfect. <laughs> I was at Home Depot today to pick up the spray paint and I had a heck of a time because a lot of the spray paint they have is semi-gloss or gloss. I don't want glossy chicken eggs. I had so much trouble finding a off-white spray paint that was matte. So what I actually ended up going with was uh, a chalked spray paint. Let me shake this up because I think it's two minutes of shaking, one minute of shaking. Always read your instructions, preferably off camera. <laughs> nope. You know what, I need a beer while I do this. There she goes going off camera again. For beer, always. I'm gonna spray paint these in this uh, chalked What's the color? It doesn't even say the color. Chiffon cream. Wait, did you say chiffon? Chiffon cream. Oh my god. Mm. I can not check these in one hour. If I need to add another coat, I will. If I don't, bonus. All right, so these are completely dried. I did do a second coat just to make sure that they were covered well. They actually have kind of a nice texture to them that actually is a lot more like real eggs, which is kind of fun. Just gotta make sure they still snap. Mm. Yep, they still snap. All right, so it looks like our eggs are primarily taken care of. Da -da -da -da. Fantastic, next we're gonna be uh, hitting up the nest itself. So here we go upstairs. <laughs> We are gonna get started on the wire frame for our nest. I am gonna peel off some of this wire here. I want the nest to be big enough for a dozen eggs. And what I'm thinking to start is having a center spot and then doing almost like a flower pattern. At the middle, wrap it around once. And then go this way and come back. I'll attach that when it comes back around, but each time I want to make it about the same length and then come back at it and go off in another direction. So, wrap it around once, go off in another direction, circle back, this camera angle is crazy for this. <laughs> It doesn't have to be perfect because nests rarely are symmetrical. I'm just gonna keep doing this uh, several times till I have a daisy design. Right now it's looking like a giant metal spider that is really weird looking. And I'm okay with that. I don't need it to be perfect. i add one more arm on there to give myself an odd number. And now I'm going to work in between and around all of these arms to give them a little more structure going up the sides in a spider web fashion. So over under. If I can get that through there, there we go. Over, under, over, under. So I've kind of got a wire spiral coming up now. And the best thing about this wire is it's quite bendy, so I will be able to adjust and change as needed as I'm trying to finalize my nest shape. <laughs> it looks pretty janky right now, but it'll look better soon. <laughs> I just need to start loosening it a little bit so I'm getting out to the edges. And as I get close to the end, 
what I'm going to be doing is when the wire goes over, I'm going to be folding these tips over that wire and holding it in place. Next one that isn't over, so this is an under, will be this guy here. So, show it close. I folded it over once. I pressed the two sides together. I took that through the bottom. Maybe. And folded it over one more time over top of the thing there. Over top of the wire. Words are fun. I use them goodly. Next one's going to be an over. So, over, together, through, and over again. Okay. Fold it over. I should have done together first. Through and down again. Slide your wire under the next loop and give it one more up and over. Okay, this is the last one. So this one already has like a little tail because it was the loose bit at the end of the wire, so I'm actually going to fold over that and back to hold it all in place. And that one should be all set. I'm going to end it up right here, I think, giving it one last twist through and over. So, trim. Knock over your camera, because that's definitely second on the docket. Yes. I have this loose bit here that I am simply going to wind around the wire. Here is the project so far. We are moving on to the tissue paper and the glue gun next. I'm starting out with the tissue paper. I'm gonna put one sheet underneath. I uh, read the instructions on my glue gun. Yes, I did. <gasps> Ooh, there it is. Ooh, there it is. I'm gonna lay a couple drops down here. I'm only doing this on the bottom section for now. Crumple the tissue paper up around the edges. Glue that on. Turn, one spot of glue. Initial piece laid, we are going to put on a few more. Now some going on the inside. remember the glue gun and glue is warm. <laughs> so I'm pushing this down and inside out to the edges. I'm going to do it a couple more times, gluing each time. Doesn't have to be precise or perfect because all this gets covered in the end. Then we're going from the bottom again and we're going to do that roll up on the edges again. So lift Slide that under the bottom, put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom piece as you drop it on there. Alright, so this time when I roll, I come up on this side, roll that in. I'm going to put a dot of glue down here to hold it. And we can move on to the raffia and Spanish moss. These are quite messy, so make sure you're doing this in a space where you don't mind a little mess happening. Obviously, I'm in my craft room, so I expect to get messy in this space. We're going to start on the edges. A few drops of glue. Pull off some of the raffia. Start pressing it on. Okay. 
it looks atrocious to start, but eventually it comes together. Take off the excess to see what actually stuck. The whole point is you want to stay messy because birds' nests are not perfect. All right, we have a start. I'm gonna go in with a pair of scissors and trim some of these excess ones so I can get down into the middle. It's coming, slowly but surely. Break this up a little bit more. So what I'm doing when I say break this up, I'm literally just grabbing this stuff and pulling it all apart so I have littler pieces. I think that'll make it a little bit easier as I go along the edging. God, I have this stuff all over me. <laughs> It's kind of fun, actually. <laughs> Chill! Chill! Come here! My little chicken nest is coming along. I kind of like. Huh. That's weird. Okay, okay, no, four. that's 12. I <laughs> got it, guys. <laughs> Doing a beer craft, gotta have a beer. I know sometimes I say uh, where craft beer and handcrafts combine, and hopefully not in a messy way. This has been a messy way. <laughs> Mm. I'm working on the craft. It's not finished yet, but I am going to have myself a lovely beer pour. And from Lena Brewing Company, who I'm making this for, we have their Big Rooster Smash. The uh, Big Rooster. That is a Big Rooster. I thought it was fitting to have this beer as we're doing this. And on the description it says, stupid 50 foot rooster, hey my car, and then a bunch of swear, well it's a swear word, but it's a bunch of like hashtag, at symbol, whatever. Time for a cold, single malt, single hop American pills, refreshing and easy. Fire up the grill, it's chicken tonight. <laughs> it attacked like the giant 50 foot chicken. Give this a quick pour. light in color, teensy bit of haze, barely there. It smells like straw, like when you walk into a barn and there's straw. A little malt, but mostly that straw scent. Cheers, everyone. Ooh. Ooh, that has a bite. Not in a bad way, though, like a uh, wake you up kind of way. The hop hits right off the bat, and it doesn't linger too long, but it's that Pilsner hop. It sits in a very clean, bright way. That is really pretty. You wanna try, babe? <laughs> it's really crisp. Like a, like biting into a fresh yeah. apple kind yeah. of crisp. Yep. Wow. That's fun. I like that one a lot. Mm. This is gonna be perfect while I finish up this craft. Cheers, everyone. Let's finish this up. You know, when you're a kid doing arts and crafts, you get to make a mess. And it's really fun. You get to throw all the stuff all over the place and have everything all over. When you're a grown-up, you're expected not to make a mess. In fact, people expect you to do the opposite, to clean all the time. Now, granted, I will have to clean up my mess after I'm done with all this. But I'll tell you what, this making a mess thing... I think people forget how fun it can be to make all the mess. And sometimes it is a good idea to go back in time and remember what it was like when you got to make a mess without repercussions. 
And I'm using this craft to relive that experience. The top is pretty good. I still have a couple holes I see that I'm going to be filling as I go. But first, I'm going to start with that problem <laughs> and the fact that the bottom is still just tissue paper. I have these little bits that were left over fallen off of this as I was, you know, dumping out the excess. I'm saving these for hole filling because the little ones can get down into the holes better. And I am moving on to brand new bags of, and you know, I said this stuff was raffia, but honestly it's too hard to be raffia. I'm feeling like it's um, twigs of some sort. It's it's not paper-like. It's it, it feels more like a, a wooden twig. So, I don't know. Mmm, hair. Ugh, too much hair. Not for very much longer. I will be including the information for our St. Baldrick's donation, which is coming up on March 12th at Metal Monkey Brewing Company, where Chu and I will both be shaving our heads bald for charity. It will be fun and wonderful and we're hoping to raise a lot of money. We've already gotten three lovely donations at this point in time. And yeah, it's just super exciting. We're gonna make a difference and I'm, I can't wait. So yay! And I get to share this journey with all of you, so that's fun too. The bottom's covered pretty well. I'm gonna do one last step to help with the bottom here. And the fact that first I'm going to trim off some of these extra bits that are sticking up. And in order to get this bottom to stay covered and stay covered well, I'm actually going to run downstairs and grab my, I have a spray adhesive. This is 3M high strength contact adhesive. Always read your instructions. I need to let that dry. So here is the back side, completely finished. When I pick it up and shake it, stuff doesn't fall off. My spray adhesive worked really well, so I'm very pleased. You know, I think the spray adhesive worked a little better than the glue gun, so I'm going to move to that for the next bit. Again with the hair. And that looks pretty much like a nest, guys. So exciting! Almost done! So you can see, got the curve down inside. It's looking pretty good! I'm liking this! Can't wait till the glue dries and I can put the eggs in. This is gonna be perfect. Oh! Yes! <laughs> <sighs> Cheers, everybody. <laughs> After the nest was finished, I took a piece of yellow construction paper and I cut out rectangles, measuring one by three inches. I then drew all the names of the beers on, put those inside of the eggs, and put the eggs back in the nest. This really turned out well. I hope Lena Brewing Company likes it because I had so much fun making it and having you along with me while I did. If you liked any of this, please hit that like, subscribe, and share button. Don't forget to donate to St. Baldrick's Charity Foundation for us to shave our heads in March. And thank you so much for joining us at Imperfectly Me Crafts, where craft beer and handcrafts combine in a really messy way. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. How long do you think I can get her to do this for, guys? <laughs> and how, how long do I open this? <laughs> Stop doing that to them, it's mean. <laughs> it's been a minute yet, I'm tired. Um, five seconds it's been. You got 55 more seconds. What? The top is more pointy. Yes. The bottom is more bubbly. So we got a bubble bottom and a pointy, pointy top. top. Wording for this is really difficult. 
Half a minute. It's only been 30 seconds since I started. You didn't even look at the clock before I started, did you? <laughs> you did not even look at the clock. We had a one minute to do this. Oh, oh, my hair, my hair, my hair. It's on the tripod. It's on the tripod. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> I can't get my hair loose. Uh, you know those little knobbly things to, you know, change how high your tripod is? Yeah, my hair was just tangled around that. <laughs> so that was real smooth. Can I stop now? 33 seconds. Oh, frick. You're a lot here. You're so <laughs> Do the roosters lay, lay a lot of eggs? No, the chickens do. Oh, okay. The roosters are involved. That's for another video. <laughs>